Jurgen Klopp's recent announcement that he's going to be staying on another two years after his current contract has been amazing news for Liverpool fans for more reasons than one. On a footballing level, the reasons are obvious. He's easily the best manager in the world alongside Pep Guardiola. He has a track record of building successful teams and his commitment to continue on at Liverpool past the current team sell-by date is the strongest possible indication he's in it for the long term at Liverpool. <laughs> But there's more than just footballing reasons why Klopp staying at Liverpool is a good thing for Liverpool Football Club. To use Barcelona's vernacular, Liverpool are more than just a football club. Liverpool have a unique identity that resonates with people around the globe. It's this identity that provides atmospheres that inspires our team to win big games and draws people in who want to experience it and be part of it. And because of that appeal and the success that comes with it, we're a bigger football club than most and we have aspirations to be the biggest club in England and eventually Europe. Now some might argue that we already are when talking about England, we're the most successful club in the country. Country. We have the largest fan base alongside Man United and we're one of the wealthiest because of it. But Man United's status as the wealthiest in England and their status as one of the big three financial powerhouses of Europe still stings the pride of most Liverpool fans who see their club as number one. You don't say. But despite the fact Man United have a similar history to us, it's because they've traditionally marketed themselves more successfully than we have that they are the more successful commercially. And that's the gap Liverpool need to bridge if they want to become undisputed in their status as the biggest club in the country and truly fulfil their potential. A golden rule of capitalism is that where there is demand, there is profit. And with Klopp signing a new deal and committing to Liverpool, his success and unique personality is adding more demand to Liverpool around the globe. People love this man's infectious personality and coupled with Liverpool's already legendary fans and atmospheres, it's it's making us more popular than ever and as a result of this brands want to invest in us and be seen to be associated with us. Now to give FSG their due, they know this. When current deals are reaching their end, they've been careful to wait, accumulate as many offers as possible and allow brand names to sweat and even haggle with each other over us before making a final offer to us and FSG have then decided which deal is the most desirable option. Smart move. Well done. And on paper, this has been to their credit. Nike in particular beat off competition from Adidas and New Balance by offering Liverpool what most sources agree to be around 40 million a year in basic, plus 20% from each unit sold in all of Nike's worldwide stores, which depending on the success of sales could take the deal to as high as 100 million a year, which would be a leading shirt sponsor for a football club and according to some sources, we are actually selling record numbers of shirts currently. But this brings me to the point of the video, because things with Nike haven't been as rosy as you might think, and as multiple outlets are beginning to report, Liverpool's deal with Standard Chartered is entering entering its final year and there's talk of a potential new shirt sponsor, which as we all know is the big one when it comes to sponsorship revenue. So it's important we as fans scrutinise what FSG are doing in this department, especially when you consider these deals are being made while the team and its manager are currently the football world's hot topic right now. We have to get these deals right and make sure this club truly reaches its potential off the pitch so it can provide sustained financial resources for the team to compete on it moving forward. So with that in mind, what's the problem what they've done previously with Nike? Well like I said, on paper everything looks rosy. We're selling record numbers of shirts and it's contributing to our revenue growing as fast as ever as a result. All should be well in the kingdom. Sort of. But one thing most journalists and Liverpool fans seem to have forgotten about with the club's deal with Nike is how the court case against New Balance was won. It's well documented by multiple sources that Liverpool and Nike both claim that Nike's 6,000 retail stores around the world, plus promotion of LFC products through its global stars such as LeBron James, Serena Williams and Drake, was an offer New Balance could not match, the implication being it was offered by Nike. This has been reported beyond a reasonable doubt to have been argued in a court of law by Liverpool FC's barrister, Guy Morpus, and considered by a court judge in his conclusion to the case. Liverpool and Nike both claim promotion of club products by prominent US celebrities as part of the deal and this promotion has not yet happened. And for the record, this is significant because despite the vast wealth of all our football clubs, none have managed to crack the US market, which is the most lucrative market of all on the planet. Now despite the fact I and many others think it's a lost cause anyway because Americans have long established sporting obsessions of their own and as a result, most reliable American sources are quite clear on the topic. Americans will never embrace soccer? But the point is though that Liverpool and Nike argued this case in court. It's a matter of public and even legal record. Whether Liverpool successfully cracked the US market through Nike and their contracted superstars is by the by. The point is they were supposed to try. Not only haven't they, but now we're reading that one of these same superstars is pledging funds to be part of a consortium to buy Chelsea. Now I'm no legal expert in anything, but owning a stake in one club while promoting the brand of another? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure there's something there about a conflict of interest, if you ask me. But the point is, she was free to do it in the first place, which can only mean that her association with Liverpool is obviously non-existent. We were promised promotion in America from global American superstars, argued in a court of law, and it hasn't happened. You! You liar! 
Now the next thing about the night deal I want to mention is probably nitpicking and I fully expect some of you to disagree with me on this one because it's purely down to personal opinion and I've asked countless Liverpool fans about this and the responses have been 50-50 but it's still something I'm going to argue for anyway and I'll explain why later. I think Nike's Liverpool kits are minging. Plain and simple, they're fucking vile. Now like I said, some of you will disagree with me on this one and when I've spoken to most Liverpool fans about it, I've had mixed results and that's fair enough. We all have our different tastes in life and this purely does come down to taste but there is still a significant number of Liverpool fans, myself included, who think these kits kits Nike are producing for us are absolutely fucking shite. You don't say. Goodness gracious, whatever shall we do? But you're Sound the alarm. And the reason I bring this up as a reason to scrutinise Liverpool's dealings with sponsors is simple. Nike are supposed to be a leading brand name in the market. They're supposed to be the brand who hires the best, the best designers, the best manufacturers, the best materials, everything. This is supposed to be the cream of the crop of sportswear. Popular opinion on Nike products should be nothing short of unanimous. And yet here we have a huge percentage of Liverpool fans unsatisfied with the product Nike are producing for us. Now don't get me wrong, still buy the shirts. The bottom line of being a fan is supporting the team at the end of the day. So buying the shirt is not a fashion statement, it's to show support for your team, but again I bring it back to it, Nike are supposed to be a leading brand name in the market, and we're arguably the best team in the world right now, and as such, a prized asset to burn Nike's logo, and this is the best you can do for us? Now, the final point I want to make is the one I'm most nervous about, because I can get in a lot of legal trouble for it, so for that reason, I'm only going to hint at it rather than go into actual detail on it. But the new kit is due to be launched in the next few days, and I have it on good authority that there's been a rather stupid and avoidable problem with it. I can't say what it is for legal reasons, and so me and my source don't get in any trouble, but I'm not making this up. I know this for a fact, and you'll see for yourselves what the design flaw has been that has had to be resolved when the kit is launched in the coming days. I guarantee when you notice it, it's one of those... But I bring it up because, again, this is another stupid problem we're having in a deal which is supposed to be a leading deal in the market. And now that the club are chasing down a new shirt sponsor at a time when the team is the most in-demand team in the country and arguably even Europe right now, it's important that FSG strike while the iron's hot and land the best deals in the footballing world. But by their own track record with Nike, they aren't doing this to their fullest potential. They fail to deliver the full potential of Nike's global reach, they're failing to produce kits that all fans like, and now they're approving kits with stupid fucking problems that need to be resolved before revealing to the world and I think it's every Liverpool fans right to question this about FSG and scrutinize their activity sufficiently so they're forced to do better on any potential deals they make in the future because this is our club at the end of the day and this is an important phase in Liverpool's history we finally got a successful team again and we have a chance to do what we failed to do in the 90s capitalize on our past successes and build a leading financial structure up that provides the team with the funds it needs to regularly compete if we get this right we'll stay competitive in the modern era from now on but if we get it wrong well, we've already been 30 years without a title, and I don't know about you, but I am not going to accept this club going through that again. So these sponsorship deals are important, and FSG need to start proving they'll get them right and deliver first-rate funding for the team. Otherwise, they can GET THE FUCK OUT! Now, I know the Champions League semi-finals have just been concluded and we've got Real Madrid in the final, so I know there will be some not wanting to focus on the political side of football right now, but I still thought this was important. So, as always, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about it, so please let me know in the comments below what you've thought about this, or whether you think we should focus on the game and not be distracted by financial issues. If you're new to the channel and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and for those already subscribed, I am trying to get more content out as often as possible. You've been great with your patience in the past, and I'm now putting more in to get as much content out as possible for the final stretch of the season. But for now take care lads and lasses and i'll see you in the next video ta-da